Hey, welcome or welcome back to Four of Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. But what I do know is that, as you will know because you'll have read the title and seen the thumbnail and possibly even have read the description, Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. It arrived finally. I missed out initially, but I managed to get it on a sneaky little restock that Beauty didn't email people and tell them about. Uh, and then this was meant to have been delivered. A whole saga. This was meant to have been delivered four days ago. Hermes apparently took it for a ride. Not quite sure where, but thankfully it finally arrived. So, if you want to find out, I was going to say if you want to find out exactly what the palette looks like, like there's anybody who's interested in makeup that doesn't already know what this bloody palette looks like, but if you want to find out exactly which shades I used to create this particular look, and how they performed, And my friend, you, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Oh my god, 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 oh my god. It's here. It's arrived. Oh, the drama I went through to get this. Sorry. I'm running warm with fibro and excitement. Now, regular viewers will know, I was gutted when this first launched and I missed out completely. I'd never ever missed out on a launch before. But Beauty Bane, Beautylish, let me down. Then my friend Heather messaged me on Thursday of last week going, Ange, Ange, quick! They've got Beauty Bay, have got some back in stock. And I'm like, oh. Now, I was in an area where there was no signal when she messaged me. So I absolutely freaked out. The minute I got signal, stopped the car, went online, chucked as much as I could into my cart, and then rang the hubby while he was on a forklift unloading stuff at work and went, Chris, 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 it's here. I need your card number. It's like, what? I'm unloading. I, I don't care. It's important. Quick, before it sells out. So I managed to get both palettes and five of the six lipsticks. The only one I haven't got yet is Are You Filming? And it was on guaranteed next day delivery. Because, like, you know, 153 quid. <laughs> so once that was ordered, and I knew that that was definitely coming, I then went on and did an order that I paid for, rather than have you paid for, for <laughs> the pig mirror. This is, like, huge. I mean, this is bigger than a standard Jeffree Star mirror. It's so cute. Mm. And it's actually a really, really, I see the mess on my desk now, look. Really, really good mirror. And I paid for next day delivery so that they would both be arriving together so I could film with them. I really hope I didn't just show you my address. Check that one I'm editing. Um, so, there I am, patiently waiting on Friday. The mirror arrived, the palettes didn't. I am now freaking out. Today is Tuesday, they have finally arrived. Then I was panicking, oh my god are they going to be in one piece because so many people have problems this time round with Beauty Bay not putting any packaging around them. I think luckily because I'd bought both palettes and five of the lipsticks they had to put it in a slightly bigger box so there was room for them to put some packaging in 
So thankfully mine turned up in one place. Thank God. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to play with it. I've got no idea what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go where my instinct takes me on this one. I have swatched it. I'll stick that up there. One thing I have noticed, and I'll try and put some pictures over this side if I can. I do very gentle swatches. I literally go one, two in the pan. Some of these are so soft, the imprints are almost gone just from swatching it. So I can understand why so many have been turning up broken if they haven't had any packaging around them. So I can't remember any of his other ones being quite this soft. Blood sugar was reasonably soft, but nowhere near as soft as this. Um, but, so I, I'm be careful with it is what I'm saying. Now, this is still a teaching channel. I will try and remember to teach rather than just enthuse about the palette or whinge about the palette if it doesn't meet my expectations. Because much as how I love Jeffrey and I love his stuff and I love his music, if if this does not meet my expectations, you will know. But um, with my chronic pain, I can't blend very quickly. And with it being a teaching channel and I want even complete beginners to be able to follow this, I don't blend very quickly. So there's a speed widget up there. If you need to, just speed me up. That's absolutely fine. I am going to talk a little bit about the difference between deep set eyes or double lidded eyes and hooded lids. So if you're a regular and you watch me all the time and you know what I'm going to say, feel free to fast forward through until I'm waving a brush at you with some colour on it. Face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. And as always, I've gone in with my antiperspirant primer. More details of that are available uh, I've got a film linked in the description box below. Let's get you zoomed in, and when I say zoomed in, I mean zoomed in. Not one of those ones that zooms you in and I'm still like half a mile away. I zoom you in so you can see what I'm doing. And also so that I can see what I'm doing. Ooh, a little bit too close. There we go. I like to see both eyes at once. Now, I've got deep set eyes. Um, I've also heard them referred to as double lidded eyes recently but I get the same issues that people with um, hooded lids get that's better I thought, my, thought I was too high that's better in that I get transfer of colour onto the upper lid if I'm cutting the crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just on the socket and when I'm using glitters even with glitter glue I get a bare patch through the middle now, I'm going to explain to you the difference between the types of eyes and then I'm going to give you a workaround so that regardless which type of eye you have, you'll be able to follow any tutorial that you find. Now, with my brows relaxed, looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see much of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if your upper static lid completely covers right down to the lash line, part or all of your mobile lid, that you have full or half hooded lids or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'll demonstrate on this side because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I can make sure I'm still on screen and in focus. If I cover my mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much lid space again if not more but tucks back away then if I cover the static lid and do the same thing you can see I've got lid space there that tucks back away as well and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that gives me the same issues that people with hooded lids have now if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush and just sketch out a new crease line 
on your upper lid. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between your crease and your brow. So use smaller blending brushes than the ones that you see using in the tutorial. Um, unless I'm doing an editorial look, I'll normally leave a gap here between the colour and the brow in order to pop the brow highlight on. Um, you may find if you're really stuck for real estate here that you have to go right up to the brow anyway. Now if you have deep set eyes like myself, what we have to do if we're putting a deeper colour through the crease is every so often sit back, relax our brows and just make sure we brought it up high enough that it can be seen when our eyes are open. So, two very different fixes for two very different eye shapes. That's why it's important to know exactly which type of eye you actually have. Right. I'm going to start off with a Luxie 205 tapered blending brush, which is a round loose blender. Whatever size the head of the brush is, that's how far it will blend your shadows out to. Oh, where do I start? Oh my gosh. Oh, this is just... Wow. Right. I'm going to start off with a What's the Tea? Oh, there is some kick up. Wow, this is super, super soft. Uh, if you're fast forwarding, now's the time to stop. I don't know if you can see the amount of kick up in that pan. Um, it doesn't worry me because I'll just pick the kick up up when I'm going to do the other eye. Now, all that I've got on my eyes at the moment is my Crow and Pebble eye primer in blank page cotton which is the pure white uh, which I apply just with a fluffy blending brush that I keep precisely for that reason and just you know blend it out across the lid. The reason I love the Crow and Pebble ones I do have a discount code it's not affiliated it's listed below. The reason I love that is it goes on dry so you can blend on it straight away you don't have to set your lids first so you don't lose any impact of colour. Right, so I'm going to start off with a What's the Tea and I'm going to do little circular movements going towards the nose. And I always make sure I only put a little bit of pigment on the brush initially because I prefer to build a pigment up than have it suddenly go warmth. And this is a pastel pigment anyway, so. Now I'm holding the brush right at the end, so I put as little pressure on as possible. As you can see, I'm doing circular movements in that direction, going to the nose, a bit of a bounce, and then reversing the direction to come back out again. The reason I do that is because I'm 45, I've lost 14 stone, which is just under 200 pounds, and my eyelids move. Now, I know 22 year olds that genetically have got quite loose eyelid skin. And by doing this, you're very gently moving your skin around so that you don't end up with any bare patches. The exception to that is this bit here where this eye was pulled around at the ophthalmic hospital. I've got super deep creasing there. And I do struggle there. I do very often have to pull the lid out taut in order to get it looking how I need it to. Right, as you can see, that's blended out a dream. I struggle here and here with dry patches that don't always take a pigment very well. But so far, that's gone on beautifully. I absolutely love, 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 love this. I love the fact that when you look at the layout of this, you can do looks either by rows or by columns. Each row and each column is, is a, a look of its own. So, you know, if you look at it and you think, I really don't know where to start, start off by doing a column or start off by doing a row. Start off with the top row and do a neutral look until you feel brave enough to chuck some of the colours in. Um, the only duplicate colour in 
a mini controversy is the shade Diet Root Beer. Uh, so you've got eight additional shades in there. The one thing I am sad about is that they didn't put that beautiful green shade in that they showed when they were doing this series. Whoever that woman was that said, I wouldn't know what to do with it. I wanted to strangle her. I really wanted to do that woman some damage. I'm like, you silly cow, that's a beautiful colour. What are you playing at? <sighs> Hopefully it will appear in the future. Uh, palette. Although it is very, very similar to a shade that I've got in my Blush Tri Persina 2 palette. A bit of fallout there. But it dusts away fine and I do my base afterwards anyway. Right. Now, which colour do I want to come in with next? Oh, it's so difficult to choose. Um, I think I might go in with I'm gonna go in with Illuminati spelled T E A, which I know is a shimmer, but with shimmers, if you blend them carefully enough, you can almost blend the shimmer pigment away, just leaving the deeper shade underneath. Now obviously they're not designed to be blended like this, so they can initially look a little patchy. But, same brush, I'm just going to run that in exactly the same way. Gently blending that across the eye, changing the direction backwards and forwards. And you can see that's, that's actually blending out really nicely, really softly. Not a huge amount of fallout, which is nice. Shh, I'm playing with makeup. And you can see that was literally just one dip into that pan. And that's just blended out really nicely. Now I don't use any kind of filters um, and this is an obvious snapchat filter but if I do that I will always make sure that the first few photos that go up before it are ones that are not filtered because um, I want you to be able to recreate these looks. I don't want you to think Oh, I'm no good because I can't get it exactly the same. I'm not James Charles. I'm not going to decide which eye looks best and then Photoshop it across so it's an exact match. You know, your eyes are not symmetrical. God did not design your face to be perfectly symmetrical. Um, admittedly, some faces are more symmetrical than others. But... All I do is every so often when I'm doing things like this is I'll stop, sit back, just relax, make sure that I've got the same kind of shapes going both sides. Still haven't dipped back into the pan yet, I'm still just blending this out. That's what I mean about the barcoding, and I do struggle with that with this eye. Sometimes the circular movement will be enough to do it, but other times I do have to gently stretch the lid out just to deal with that. I 
I'm going to need to come up a little bit higher on this side here. This is what I mean about always double checking, sitting back and just checking that you've got the same shape both sides, because you might have to do slightly different shape one side, just to make them look the same. For a streamer, like that has actually blended out really nicely. It's kept a bit of the sheen, it's turned it almost into a satin rather than a shimmer. So you've still got a little bit of sheen there. But it's mainly the base pigment that you're seeing. <clears throat> right, I'm cleaning my brush off on a clean washcloth. I prefer that to using a colour switch. Um, I found that colour switches are quite harsh on your bristles after a while. Right, I'm going to go in with a smaller blending brush. This is a Rolling Lang Nickel Chic Pro eyeshadow brush. It's still loosely packed, but as you can see, it's oval. So it's going to help me contain the colour more through the crease. And I'm going to go into Not A Fact. Now, Not A Fact is a burgundy. Reds are notoriously difficult to create, as are purples. This is a combination of both. And I'm putting a matte on top of a shimmer. So this could go to head in a hand cart. Let's, let's just see what happens, shall we? I'm going to start off with little tiny backwards and forwards motions all the way through the crease to lay the pigment in. And then I'm going to do it like a windshield wiper to blend that colour out a little bit. Pick up a fragment more of that, that shade. And then tiny, tiny circular movements, keeping the brush narrow, flat side on. I don't want to cover up Illuminati, I just want to soften the edges of this not a fact and just blur it through the crease there. That actually blended out really nicely. I'm just going to pop a little bit of that onto the outer corner of the eye. You can expect to see this quite a bit on my channel because obviously there are a lot of different looks that I can do with this. Um, and for those of you who've not been able to get one yet or who've got one and are not sure on looks that you can do. I know a lot of people are saying they're scared of that yellow. So I will be doing some looks with the luminous yellow, but today I felt like going straight to the bottom row and going grungy. This is a really lovely sort of beetroot colour. some stone like buggery. There are pressed pigments in here. Um, I'll try and remember to put the picture up of the pans and I'll mark which ones are the pressed pigments uh, on the outro. I'll try and remember to do that. Right, let's clean that brush off. Now I'm going to grab, this is one of the Jeffrey Morphe brushes, it wasn't in the set, it's one of the brushes they were selling individually. This is the JS24, it's a lip brush. But I love this because it's really easy to get nice and tight into that corner there. 
and I'm going to use this Wet n Wild primer spray to wet the brush after I've put the pigment on it. Never put a pressed, never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. You will screw it up. I promise you. Right. I have got to try that silver. I have got to try the diet cola shade. Quite crumbly, so be careful with this one. Just packing pigment onto both sides. And then I'm going to wet the pigment. Now always dry this ferrule off. I always do it just by putting it into the bend of my finger and twisting it round. Because you don't want moisture getting down here and loosening the glue that's holding your bristles in place. Right, now, so that I can see what I'm doing and you can see what I'm doing, I've got a little mirror here that I'm going to look down into. I'm going to pop this into the inner corner. Wow! And just... I'm sorry, are you seeing this? Now I thought the silver in the Thirsty palette was good. This is just... Right, drying the brush off. It's not often I'm lost for words. But that has taken my breath away. Okay, pigment on both sides again. Wet the pigment, dry the ferrule. Now as I said, this side I do have to stretch the lid out. Otherwise what happens is the shimmer packs loosely into that deep crease rather than being nicely blended as it is now. Oh my god, look at how reflective that is. Um, and it dries in the crease through the day and then as I'm sort of moving my eye through the day it ends up cascading down my cheeks. I deliberately haven't done a cut crease because I want to see if these shimmers are opaque enough to go over the deeper matte and I think that answers our question quite emphatically. <laughs> Now I'm going to go into Sleep Paralysis. Wow, this one is super soft. I can see why so many people's palettes arrive with this one broken. Um, it really is very... You're going to have to be super, super careful with this palette. Particularly that shade. You barely need to put any pressure on at all to pick pigment up. And I'm going to pop this onto the middle part of my lid, heading out towards the deeper cranberry on the outside. I like this shade. And then just kind of drag the two colours together where they meet. Just to blend them into one another. That one does fall out a lot, in case you were wondering. Dry the brush off, back into the palette. Pigment, dry the ferrule, and apply the shade. Wow.
I like that a lot. Right, I am going to pause you while I pop some base makeup on etc. Now for you my darlings there will be absolutely no delay at all, I'll be back instantly. I however will see you the very next time that I press the record button. Hello, I am back. God, I really love this combination. Right, going in with this flat top brush that I showed you earlier into the burgundy beetrooty not a fact. Join it up with the outside there and just run that all the way along my lower lash line. And then what I'm doing I'm very lightly just stamp a slightly darker line just on the end there because my eyes are very watery today I cannot put eyeliner on but by adding just that slightly darker stamped bit just there it gives the illusion of pulling the eye out and up in the same way that a winged liner would do. So there is a little tip for you if you also struggle with watery eyes. I struggle with my fibro, that combined with the fact that trees are shedding a lot of leaves today so there's a heck of a lot of pollen around. Mm, pretty. And then I'm going to grab this brush. This is from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, but I love it because it's flat topped but it's chunky. It's great for buffing colours out with. So I'm going to initially pop into What's the Tea and very lightly buff along that lower lash line just to soften the deeper shade, just a fraction but I'm not going beyond there otherwise you lose that effect you don't have to use a brush like this, you can use a smudger brush or a densely packed blender but for me this brush is just the perfect shape This is a brush that I got from eBay years ago. It's a lip brush. And I'm going to dip into Ranch and pop that. Oh, my white balance on my viewfinder has gone skew with. Hopefully, that's not the case on the actual film. And just run it along underneath blend in with those shades are just there. This is a stunning colour. I'm really tempted to use it as a highlight but I think even on me it's going to look too stark. But for a brow bone highlight and an inner corner highlight it is perfect a Monday. Do you know what? I might use this as a highlight and just see if it'll work. 
It's just so pretty. Oh, look at that. Love that look. Right, I'm going to pause you one final time, my darlings, while I chuck some highlighter on the rest of my face, possibly that ranch shade. Add some mascara, choose a lipstick, do something with my hair. I'll be back with my finished first impression look. Okay, hair has gone nuts as always. Right, I did use Ranch as my highlight and it's stunning but will obviously only work on pasty ass bitches like myself. Uh, I used the Revolution Blowout Cannabis Sativa Mascara. This has got a huge wand, if you've got tiny eyes don't bother or get disposable wands and use that instead. And the lipstick of course I had to use Shane. I also think it goes really well with this eye look. Um, all of the Jeffrey liquid lipsticks, I think apart from the red and pink ones, are certified safe for eye use. You can still use the red and pink ones on your eye, but they may stay. Um, I've used a lot of his as bright eyeliners and they're awesome, they don't crack, they don't feather, they don't split. Um, they are really really good so if you have bought some of these colours and you think I'm never going to be brave enough to wear that, what are you talking about? Use it as an eyeliner, use it as an eyeshadow base, you know pop some on and blend it out with a, a brush and use that to deepen up and use it as a base for other eyeshadows over the top but I will put the picture up of the palette again here and I will mark the ones that are the pressed pigments. Oink, oink, pigments. Get it? Pigments. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a moment to myself. So that's the pressed pigments. Now, the only real difference is that they can't call them eyeshadows because they might stain your skin and if you have very sensitive skin you might have a reaction to them. In the EU, we can call those eyeshadows because everything in them is approved for use on the eyes and the immediate eye area. It's only in America that they have to call them pressed pigments. So, I have used so many pressed pigments on my eyes and yes, some of them stain, but I've not had any irritation from any of them. I really am loving this eye look. Um, so, obviously, this is only my first use, and I've only used, what, one, two, three, four, five, six of the shades. So there's still another 12 that I need to play with. But, for the first six shadows that I've used, I am really happy with them. They are super, super softly pressed, though, so treat this palette with kid gloves you are going to get kick up you do not need to jam your brush into the pan at all um, the slightest little touch you'll get pigment on your brush um, the mattes blended out beautifully even that deep burgundy colour which I was worried about because I was blending it out over a satin which if anything was going to make it skip that would um, and it blended out really, really beautifully. Uh, even on the dry patch that I've been struggling with here to the, um, the last few days, the shimmers went on as Jeffrey shimmers always do. Uh, beautifully creamy, beautifully reflective. Uh, I even blended one out uh, using it as a matte shade, which was the Luminar Tea, which is the sort of the dusky green that I use between the lighter teal and that sort of black currenty shade, and it blended out brilliantly. There wasn't a huge amount of fallout from it because you do normally get a lot of fallout when you're blending a shimmer. There wasn't that much fallout. What did fall out dusted away really easily without staining. Um, it didn't go patchy, it didn't skip. The lipstick, this is one coat. Um, if you are the sort of person who does your bottom lip and then presses your lips together, I have seen people that do that 
that then have to apply a second coat. I never do that with liquid lipsticks. I do the bottom lip and then I do the top lip and let them dry and then I decide whether it needs a second coat or not. Um, but if you are the kind of person that does your bottom lip and goes mm -hmm, you are going to probably need to put a second coat on. As I said, this could be used as an eyeliner if you are not the kind of person that would wear this shade out. Personally, I am really wishing it wasn't a Tuesday night and that we had somewhere to go tonight because I am really loving this look. This would be an awesome sort of Christmas, New Year's Eve sort of look. Really smoky, really pretty. I mean, if you were to do this, and if you had a dress or a suit, the colour of that, that sort of burgundy, it would absolutely pop. Seriously, if you were to get an outfit that colour with silver or pewter coloured accessories <sighs> makes you want to go and get an outfit in those colours now. Spend even more money I haven't got. But, so far, I'm loving it. Obviously, I'm going to use all the other shades as well and report back on those and let you know what they are like but I hope you've enjoyed this if you're one of my 4F babies please double check you're still subscribed YouTube are still unsubscribing people every time I put a new film up I lose subscribers I lose between 1 and 5 subscribers every time I put a film up um, they do trickle back in over the next couple of weeks as people realise they've been unsubscribed but it's very frustrating when you put a film up and drop subscribers and then slowly they build back up and then you put the film up and it drops subscribers again. It's like being on a roller coaster and I can't do those no more. Not with my back like it is. Um, so yeah, double check that please. Uh, if you liked this, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike button. Tell me why. What was it you didn't like? Did you not like the colours that I chose? Do you not like Jeffrey? Do you not like me? Um, you know, if you're brain, if if you're going to be Billy Big Balls and hit the dislike button, then make sure you tell me why. Because just hitting dislike doesn't tell me what it was you didn't like. So how can I improve? If, however, this is your first time here, hi, hello, welcome hope you enjoyed this. If you've made it this far through, I'm guessing you must have liked something about the film. Um, it'd be awesome if you two would like to join the 4F family. That is super easy to do. There is a subscribe button down there in red. Click that, turn it to grey, and then if you want notifications, I've got no idea how many hoops you have to jump through at the moment. Because gone are the days when you could just like a channel and YouTube would tell you when they upload new content. Yes, that is sarcasm. I know it's the lowest form of wit, but I'm in pain and it's the only kind of wit I've got right now. Right, my darlings, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.